Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we're going to talk about what I think is the, the, the most valuable part of your clothing system for your hunting stuff. Um, there's a lot of clothes out there, a lot of good ones. I'm going to tell you, um, in my opinion, for whitetail hunting, what I think is, is, is the mandatory kind of, kind of setup that I find that I use 99.9% .9 of the time. Now, when you get into extreme cold weather, hunting in the twenties and the teens and it was zero degree weather, yes, I'm adding more stuff and I'm switching over to some bulkier, heavier, thicker stuff. Um, but other than that, other than that extreme stuff, 99% of what I do is going to be in this in this kind of a clothing setup and I don't care if that means that it's uh, 75 degrees or 80 degrees all the way down to 25 degrees this is the kind of stuff that I'm wearing here and it basically boils down to just a few key components which we're going to talk about for you and not a lot of it's expensive so I mean we're not talking much money in here so I'm going to break it in for you uh, before I do make sure I tell you hit the subscribe button down below hit that bell notification that way you get more stuff uh, from me all my videos and access to it and uh, for a lot of this stuff I'm going to explain to you I will put a link down in the description below for you so you know where to find it if you're looking for these kind of things. I'll give you a few options in there because again it's not close. There's one item in here that is actually what I say it is the best hunting jacket I've ever used in my life and I will say that about that one. The other one I love the stuff I'm using but there's other stuff out there that works as well too. So let's kind of take it from the bottom up. First of all as far as your footwear stuff any hiking boot that you like that is going to be in a um, waterproof kind of a setup. Non-insulated waterproof one is going to cover you for a lot of stuff if you're on dry land. If you're in water or hunting swamps, uh, things like that, rubber boots, or even now I use a lot of hip boots. I've done videos on the lacrosse trapper line or trap line model hip boots that I wear a lot because they're very tough and durable. They're fantastic. Again, I'll put a link to some of this below for you and I'll probably put some of the videos at the end. It'll show you those individual reviews. Um, Keen, I swear, buy Keen boots. I love Keen hunting boots. These are the ones that I showed you guys in that video as well too. These are the Pittsburgh soft toe model. Soft toe, not steel toe. I love them. They're, they're absolutely incredible. I've been wearing them all season. Um, they're a great boot. If you're looking for the lacrosse ones, uh, rubber ones, I highly recommend the 800. The lacrosse Burley 800s. These are the original non-800s that I have here because I had them handy. But the 800 models are, are my favorite for when it gets cold. These are my scouting and early season ones. These are actually 20 year old. This is when they were actually made with real rubber. Now there's a lot of clay content in them. They're not as good as these. Um, but the, the new ones, but there's no option. All boot companies kind of make them like that now. But I love the ankle fit design of these. They really hold on to your feet well. I love the rubber. It's a lot more durable than neoprene is, especially in the pickers and the briars and the crap like that. Even going over barbed wire fences that you get in pri private property. Um, these just hold up really, really well. So I love these. So footwear wise, whatever you're comfortable with is going to be just fine. I got my Keen Summits. Uh, I got a couple pairs of these Summit Countries. I, somebody told me they don't make them anymore but I'm sure they've been replaced with something else but these are an insulated version of Keen and these are actually nice and lightweight love the Keen boots myself personally so but you're going to want some kind of footwear you're going to probably need a couple different pairs of boots there is no one pair of boots fits everything throughout the season so let's leave the cold weather stuff out of there I did a video on the cold weather stuff I'll maybe even link that in here for you before also but for 99% of your hunting season a pair of hiking boots or a pair of knee-high rubber boots is going to do what you want, okay, and handle everything you're looking for in its personal preference. Keen, my favorite, lacrosse makes the best rubber boots, period, that I've ever used. Um, gum leaf, I hear, is really good, too. I haven't tried a pair yet, um, but I know uh, uh, Kevin over there at the Deer Hunting Podcast, him and his wife, they got a, pair, a couple pairs of those, and they love them. I haven't had the experience of trying them yet, but uh, lacrosse, absolutely phenomenal. I'm very happy with them. I even have their snake boots, too. They've been really good, the rubber snake boots. But so once you have that set, um, we're whitetail hunting. So I want to put this out there right now. Forget the whole, don't, I'm not worried about cotton. Okay, you hear everybody, cotton's horrible. Cotton holds moisture, cotton is and that. I understand that. Keep in mind, though, I hunt pretty hardcore and I hunt a lot of times of the year and I'm always in cotton socks. I am in cotton underwear and a cotton t-shirt like this every single time even in the cold weather. That's just what I do. I'm comfortable in it. I don't mind it. Now, if I was going to Alaska or when I've been up on a couple caribou hunts and things like that where I'm uh, on my own and self-sufficient, I have nobody else to rely on or no camp to go back to or anything like that, yes, then I'm not wearing cotton, okay? But it's, cotton's not necessarily a bad thing. So wear whatever you want to there. As far as your pants, 
These pants that I'm wearing, I got these from Bass Pro Shops for like 20 bucks. They sell them on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart. They're just standard cargo pants, couple pockets in each side. Very simple, but they are that kind of rip stop. Uh, you know, they got that cross checking all over them. They're kind of a rip stop type pants. They're lightweight and they dry super fast. Okay, when they get wet, they dry quick. Are they cotton? I think they are actually. They might be cotton. I, I don't even know. I, I don't care. I have other ones that are cotton. Just look for a pair of pants. Something like that that's got the amount of pockets you need that is going to, and cotton is fine, but a pair of pants. It, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be anything fancy. Khaki, green, gray, I, I don't care. Camouflage is highly overrated. There is no benefit to camouflage whatsoever. I straight up promise you I've proven this and said it time and time and time again. So if you want camo, get camo. There's plenty of camo cheap BDU pants out there. Believe me, this layer of pants, your hunting pants, are, are the least important part of your system, which you'll find out here in a minute why. I'll explain it to you. Um, but so get whatever pair of pants you want. It does not make any difference. Make sure they have the pockets that you want in that configuration. I have these here. These are size 34s. These are what I wear every day, but I have three pairs of these in 36s that I wear for hunting. The reason I get them in 36s is so I can put one or two layers of thermals or a layer of thermals and a pair of sweatpants under them to keep me warm when I need warmth in there. And I need those extra Layers. So um, those are nice to have. So I buy them a one size bigger for my actual hunting pants, um, but I'm not afraid to get them bloody. I'm not afraid to beat them up. I'm not afraid to walk through dew-soaked grasses and stuff like that on my way to my stand because I know that the second I get in stand, within about an hour, they're completely dry again because that's the kind of lightweight material they are. They work fantastic. Now, if you're out there in a blue jean or something like that, they're gonna get wet. They're gonna stay wet the whole time you're out there. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I like these very light, thin, comfortable hunting pants. Now that's just that, and again, you're gonna wear them for a lot of the system. Now there's another part of this bottom that becomes very valuable. That is these right here. I use First Light. These are First Light Boundary Storm Tight, and uh, I have two pairs of these. I, this is the most valuable pant you can have. It is a rain shell. That's all it is. Very thin, very small and compact, folds up to literally about nothing. And uh, it is super tough. These are incredibly durable and tough pants. Uh, what I, in, in any rain gear pant, basically, is what we're going to say. Now, these have got a lot of advantages to them. I did a review on this stuff, too, last year. Um, but I like the full side zippers. I like the side zippers from the top, too, so you can access everything I have in my pockets real easy. And I can vent and let heat out. Um, and I, I, I like them. They're just, and they're really tough and durable. The reason that these are such an important part of your system is not for rain, okay? Obviously, they work good when it's raining. They're rain gear. But the advantage to them is twofold. One, they are windproof. That is key, okay? Windproof. The second one is that they are waterproof. Now, not necessarily just for rain. If you are walking through cattails, you're walking through any vegetation that's, you know, high, even grasses, ferns, things like that, um, when you get those cool mornings, you're going to have frost and dew. And when that dew, it turns into dew and you have that wetness on there. If you got to walk, a, you know, five, six hundred yards through a field of that stuff, your legs are going to be soaked. And if you got legs like I do, which are like eight inches long, um, I mean, my legs are so short that if they made boxers two inches longer, I could wear them as actual pants. So for me, that's a whole other world of problems. I mean, regular, you know, grass in the yard is almost knee deep on me. So for me, having something like this that can keep that dew off of me is important. So rain pants are a tremendous asset for that. And then the windproof factor of this will make this pant the warmest pants you can have on. Um, I don't care. I, I've hunted, you know, I'm a traditional bow hunter. I've been in wool for years, you know, and I have more wool. I have thousands of dollars of wool clothes that I don't even touch anymore. I love it. I wear it a lot in the winter time still, you know, because it is nice and warm, but it, it a wool pant cannot keep you as warm as this can because of the wind blocking capabilities of this and the fact that they keep these pants and your layers dry when you're out there. So a pair of rain pants and a pair of regular BDU $20 pants anywhere you buy these at is going to be incredible. These are going to be what you're going to wear a lot of the time. These are what you're going to be to protect this stuff when you're going in in the mornings. And it's what you're going to use to keep the, on the windy days to block the wind. Are they noisy? No. Okay. Do they sound noisy right here? Yeah, they kind of do, but they're also dry. All right. When you're walking to your stand, believe me, they are not loud. This rain gear is not loud. I've worn it. I, I, I've killed probably, I'll, I've probably killed maybe... 
12, 13 deer in these pants here. Um, so they're not bad at all, I'm telling you. They're, they're phenomenal. But any reindeer pants you want. Rivers West makes really good ones. Uh, First Light, I love First Light stuff. Kuyu has some good ones as well, too. I got Kuyu's uh, Chew Catch jacket. That system's phenomenal. Um, again, I'll put some links to this stuff down below for you. But these, I like these First Light ones a lot. They've proven very durable. But a waterproof bottom is going to be a huge factor. So that is all you need on the bottom. You need a pair of rubber boots if you're hunting in the water, and a pair of hiking boots if you're not hunting in the water. You need a pair of green or gray or something, just a cheap pair of hunting pants. These things, they all they do is carry your stuff and protect your base layers. Okay, we'll get into that. But these, that's all the outer layer does. It protects your important insulation layers, and it carries your crap. These protect you from the wind and from the rain. That's what they got to do. So that's what you want to have on the bottom. That's pretty important. Now, as far as on the top, jacket wise, these two jackets, they are the exact same thing. This is the Columbia Ascender jacket. I've done videos on this jacket. This jacket is the best hunting coat I have ever worn in my entire life, hands down. They are dirt cheap. I will have links to them down below. You can get them in like all kinds of earthy colors so they're fantastic but with this jacket on it is a soft shell jacket that is windproof and water resistant heavily water resistant i mean i've done full days when i went down to georgia last year i wore the black for i got three of these and i wore the black version on the way down there just as a jacket well when i arrived down there and i met with steve angel from traditional outdoors we met in the woods and then we drove out, we parked our trucks, and then we started hunting hogs. Well, it was pouring rain. We got there at daybreak. We hunted the entire day, and I wore that black one all day long in the pouring rain. And by the time I got back, it was kind of funny because when I got back to my hotel that night, I hung it on the door jam, and I had to actually put the garbage can underneath of it that was in there, the, the hotel garbage can, because it was dripping water out. I stayed completely dry, but the thing, it actually absorbed so much water throughout the entire day of hunting in the rain that it was like a half a gallon of water that came out of it, and I stayed dry. So this jacket, windproof, very, very, very water resistant. Um, and it's affordable and it's super quiet it makes no noise and it just works incredible so I highly recommend this jacket the Columbia Center jacket best hunting jacket I have ever worn I cannot say it enough um, I will never not hunt in this jacket I love it and I'm sure there's other great ones out there but I'm telling you firsthand best jacket ever tight in the sleeves which is nice little bit of stretch to it so if you put more layers in there you're fine but for me for shooting that bow I don't get any of that bulk there uh, nice fit to it you know low right cut and um, you know, I, I love the jacket, and I like that it does not have a hood. I never wear a hood. I'm never going to wear a hood, and I, I don't like hoods. So for me, this jacket is phenomenal. Now, I do believe a vest is important as well, too, because a vest does two things. One, it has, adds another layer of protection. Two, it breaks up this solid outline. I'm not a fan of camo, but I wouldn't mind changing this up from this big block mass of my body and giving it a little break up to it um, just to change it up a little bit. So it doesn't matter if it's a solid vest or what it is you're wearing, um, but I, I'll show you that. Um, but then the other advantage to it is when I put my harness on and I have those shoulder straps, having that vest over keeps those straps tight and it's going to keep them out of the way. If I lean in, I don't have to worry about that shoulder strap or the buckle on it snagging in my bowstring. So I like having a vest. I run a Kuyu vest. This one right here. Uh, this is a Kuyu vest. I like it a lot. Why? Because it's almost the same thing as this Columbia jacket. As far as that, it's a soft shell, but it is windproof and very water resistant. When I put this on and I have this set up on here like this, and the collar on that one comes up nice and high, and I can zip that right up for protection there. I mean, this is a heck of a setup. I don't need anything more than this. This is everything. I got good pockets on there, places to keep stuff. Um, both of them have nice little chest pockets. I, I love this setup. But you can see how that now breaks up 90% of it. This is what I look like when I'm in a stand hunting. This is pretty much my exact same outfit I'm in right here, but I either got a hat, you know, I have some kind of a hat on. But, but this is all I need. Sweet, simple, and easy. So you're not talking much money. In vest-wise, like I said, I really like the Kuyu one, but there's a lot of other great vests out there. I, I definitely like the soft shell type things like this, like this Ascender jacket, like that Kuyu. I'm a huge fan of it. Again, I've got tons of wool. 
you know, there was a time 20 years ago, this was my favorite vest. I have two of these, and I think I paid $200 at the time for these King of the Mountain vests. And uh, don't get me wrong, fantastic vest. I still wear it, and I wear them as an insulation layer underneath other clothing in the wintertime because it does insulate good, but this thing cannot stop wind for nothing. I can blow right through that. There's no wind protection or waterproof. Now, wool, when it's wet, stays comfortable. And it stay, actually, when it gets wet, it gets warmer because it's the threads swell and it becomes more windproof. But, um, but it, then it gets really heavy and it takes forever to dry. I'm, I'm not really a fan of wool too much anymore except for in the winter. But any vest that you want is going to do its job for you. So those are pretty simple. As far as base layers, you know, you got a couple options. I like these. They quit making them years ago, but I have... <clears throat> I want to say I got 15 or 20 pairs. These are just rocky, um, rocky thermals, and I want to say they're probably polyester. What are they? Cotton? What are they? Let me see. I don't even know. Um, it does not. I cannot read it. It is wore out. That just says chocolate brown. 100% polyester. Okay. This polyester fleece. That's what that is. Um, any of them, you know, it does. There's no. They don't have to be even a thermal brand. Get this stuff at Walmart. It works perfect. This one. I think I bought this one at a Walmart or a Dunham's. Another one. 100% polyester sweatshirt. Okay. Instead of buying it as a thermal that's going to cost you like 50 bucks a piece, I got it from a regular store, and I want. You know, this was before it got on happy and looked like this. It was. It was a nice shirt. I mean, I've had it for 20 years, and I want. I probably paid 15 bucks for it. It's phenomenal. I wear it constantly. Um, you know, simple hoodies. Cotton hoodies, these things are fantastic. They do a great job as insulating value. Uh, a lot of factor to those. So don't get too carried away with your insulating layers because your outer layers are going to protect that insulating layers as far as I'm concerned. Some of you guys are going to give me a hard time and say, oh, but you need moisture wicking and you need all that stuff. No, you need thermal regulation. Okay, Moisture wicking is great, but moisture wicking is a band-aid on a problem that you already have. The problem is that you're not thermal regulating, so you need moisture wicking. If you're thermal regulating, you don't need moisture wicking, and therefore that stuff doesn't matter, and you don't have to spend tremendous amounts of money on it. Remember, we are hunting whitetails somewhere in a normal area, within a mile or so from your truck. Okay, We're not getting too crazy here. Thermal regulate. That means take your pack, take your outer layers, and put them all into your pack. Walk out in there and just, you know, in your thermals or whatever you want to. Or if it's cold and wet in the morning, put on just your rain pant layer and your boots and your, you know, boxers, rain pants, and then your uh, Columbia jacket with your t-shirt. Walk out there and stay comfortable. When you get to the stand, put your base layers on. Okay, thermal regulation. That's what's most important in my opinion. So I don't worry about moisture wicking, anything like that. None of it matters to me. I'm quite content and comfortable. Other thing we need is some kind of a hat. Obviously hats are good. This hat here though I want to talk about in particular. This is Outdoors Research um, and I can't remember what they call it, the something sombrero. Um, I will put a link to this below. I cannot remember the name of it. Um, I have three of these now and I love this hat. Um, so I can't remember the name but I will put a link of this down below. But this hat by Outdoor Research is incredible. The size of this hat that you get this amount of space you have almost covers your entire shoulders. So as a rain hat, this thing is phenomenal. So even if you're not wearing rain gear, if you're standing there in a tree like this, this thing here almost keeps your whole body dry as it's raining out. So this is my absolute favorite rain hat. And with the Velcro on the sides, it's nice. You can put it up like that if you want to, but you can also adjust that. Like So if I'm shooting this way, I can have that there and I can draw back and that string can fit right in. It gives you a lot of flexibility and it's nice and compact. And it folds up easy and you can stick it right in your pack, sweet, simple, and easy. I will put a link to it below. It is not super cheap. I want to say it was 50, 60, 70 bucks. It's not a very cheap hat, but it is Gore-Tex. It will last you a lifetime and the thing is incredible. Again, I have a few of these and I don't ever not have one in my pack. Best hat I've ever worn for rain, period. Keeps that stuff from raining all over you. Keeps it from getting in there. It just keeps it from getting down the back of your neck, on your shirt. Nothing gets wet with this hat on. It's absolutely incredible. So there you go. That's basically in a nutshell. As you can see, we're not talking about a lot of money. We're not talking about a lot of gear. We're not talking about a lot of crazy stuff. Your normal, I mean, realistically, the stuff you have in your closet will work for 99% of it. The only thing you have to buy would be a good pair of rain pants, that Columbia Center jacket, 
in, in, in a decent rain hat if you want a rain hat those are optional maybe you're not hunting in the rain but even if you're not hunting in the rain the water or the rainproof or uh, water and windproof pant and that a center jacket this stuff right here in my opinion it doesn't matter who makes the pants any one of them are fine any waterproof pants this jacket like i said i can't i cannot praise it enough and these pants but this is really it this is all it takes you have these you have everything you need the rest of it is all stuff you can put together any way you want to so that's my take on it i know some of you guys are going to argue with me and tell me that if i'm not running around in full sitka which i have full sitka i have full first light i have full kuyu i have all that kind of stuff and yes i wear it on certain trips 99% of the time I'm wearing what I'm wearing right now and I'm throwing that jacket on and those pants over top of it and I'm going out and I'm killing deer. So it is what it is. Take it for what it's worth. In my opinion, you don't have to get crazy on this stuff. So I'll have links down below for some of this stuff. Kind of gets you steered in the right direction. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.